to talk to you about is redeeming images. And I want to begin with a question for you. When you think of the Christian life, what do you think of? What practices come to your mind? What is the essence of Christianity? I would guess, and I could be wrong here, but I would guess that the popular view of Christianity concerns the internal, the spiritual, the disembodied. We think of Christianity as something in our heads, something in our hearts. We grow by reading the Bible, by praying, by meditating on our own, by learning more information about the Bible. And these are actually good things. But I would suggest to you that we need to return to the scriptures and recover the main images of Christian practice and see what they teach us both about art and redemption. And I think we need to return to these central images because there is a tension, a dualism, a separation between the material and the spiritual, between the earthly and the heavenly. And that is seeped into our culture and is seeped into our church culture. I myself felt that tension when I was growing up. I felt that I occupied two worlds. In one world, I was with my friends, going to concerts, playing sports, building things, jumping on the trampoline, going to the lake. However, there was another world that I occupied. I was urged to read the scriptures, to pray, to go to church. For the most part, I thought of this second world as the world inside my head. For I could not see God. I could not touch him. I had to live by faith. Faith was acknowledging something immaterial, something beyond me in my physicalness. The world of the physical and the world of the spiritual were locked in their respective rooms, never to come out and play. And maybe why, this is why the church in the modern period had, has, a, has had a complicated relationship with artists and creatives. I'm afraid that we have relegated Christianity to something in our mind and lost the sense of how holistic redemption is. How God communicates what Christianity is through the images that he has given his church. There is a felt flatness to some versions of Christianity. Not an embodied invitation to a historic sacramental Christianity. The historic images that God has given his church are not the practices that we usually think. The practices, the images that Christ gave to his people most explicitly are baptism in the Lord's Supper. Baptism in the Lord's Supper. And we need to ask ourselves, why did Christ give these? He could have given us anything, but he chose these two images of baptism and the Lord's Supper to communicate with us about what God is doing in the world. And we could say many things about these images, but I want to say four things. First, they teach us that Christianity is both communal and personal. Communal and personal. It was C.S. Lewis who said that the devil always brings errors and pairs. He always brings errors and pairs. Pairs of opposites. He relies on your extra dislike of the one to, gradu to draw you gradually into the other. It is popular to pit the communal and the personal against one another. But in the sacraments, they actually come together. These practices are individual in one sense, but in the very same respect, they're communal. These practices, by definition, are to be done with other people. Baptism is to be witnessed by a congregation. It is your initiation right into the church. The Lord's Supper is a meal that we partake of with other people. You don't do it by yourself. It's with the church body. Baptism and the Lord's Supper teach us that Christianity is not only personal, but it is more than personal. It's a body ethic. 
These images teach us that there is no such thing as community-less Christianity. There is no such thing as churchless Christianity. There is no such thing as loving the bridegroom and shunning the bride. So, implications for art. I don't have much time. The best art is personal, but also communal. It draws people in. It unites people. Second, both baptism and Lord's Supper teach us that Christianity is comprehensive. Have you ever thought about what we are actually doing in these acts? These actions include the body, the mind, and the senses. The water rushes over our head, through our hair, into our ears in baptism, if you're a good Baptist. <laughs> we, pl we place the bread and the wine on our lips and in our mouths, and we chew it, and we swallow. As Jamie Smith notes, one of the first things that should strike us about Christian worship is how earthly, material, and mundane it is. To engage in worship requires a body with lungs to sing, knees to kneel, legs to stand, arms to raise, eyes to weep, noses to smell, and tongues to taste. The main images that Christ bestowed upon his church screams to us that Christianity is a religion for the whole person. Art can hit people at different levels. Some art is for the eye, others for the ear, others for the heart, others for the mind. But the best art brings coherency to these. The best art brings coherency to all of those senses. Third, these images declare to the world that there will be a new creation, but this only comes through suffering and death. There will be a new creation, but this only comes through suffering and death. In baptism, we go under the water to declare that the chaotic world has come over us in death. In the Lord's Supper, we eat and drink of Jesus' body and blood. When you think about it, in one sense, the two sacraments that Christ gave us are gory. They're off-putting. And we need to ask ourselves, what does this mean for art? Maybe it is not only the beautiful, but the painful, the distasteful, the gory, the macabre, that actually more plainly discloses the healing power of God. We not only need a theology of glory in our art, we need a theology of the cross. And this is, this is huge because Christians who are artists in the past, this, my sense of this is that we have been prone to present this pretty picture of the Christian life. That whitewashes the pain and the suffering and the hardships of life. But in the sacraments, it's different. The fact is we have a bloody side pierce savior as the center of our faith. And art needs to reflect that in some way. But in case we forget, this dying, this suffering in the sacraments always ends with life. With oceans of hope, we are brought out of the water. We eat of Jesus to live. It's life by death. Life by death. So in art, we need to show people the horrors of death and the beauty of life. And we need both of those. I'm almost out of time, so let me skip my fourth point. But application. What are the implications of these images, these practices for Christianity? These images teach us that Christianity cannot be relegated to a merely personal, internal, or disembodied thing. And we need more and more people who are interested in showing us the far reaches of Christianity. 
We need more artists who display the glory of God in the visual. We need more movie directors who tell stories that touch the recesses of the human heart. We need more composers who make music like Howard Shore. We may need more singers, woodworkers, architects, interior designers, advertisers, project managers, marketing experts, because each of these things touch us in a unique way. We need them to show us again how Christianity is a religion for the whole person. Because in the images of baptism in the Lord's Supper, God has already shown this to be true. As Stanley Hauerwas said, some people come to the church saying, I want to be more spiritual. The church responds, have some bread, take some wine. This is the response one might expect from a faith that sees the Holy Spirit as resting on the body. Thank you.